Hello everyone, welcome back to the Petscop YouTube series. Today we're going to be adding some dialogue. First thing we'll want to do is import some assets, which I will do right now. It'll include a resume button and an NPC. At the end of the video, I'll do some explanation of code, but otherwise I'll get straight to it. First thing you'll want to do is create a canvas layer, and then you'll want to rename it to dialogue handler. You'll also want to add a panel. Then you want to add a rich label text and add two. Our first one will be called speaker. The other one will be called dialogue. And then finally, we will add a texture button. And this will be our resume button. I'll do some quick adjustments. Okay, so from here, we're gonna to want to go over to our textures and we will want to add a normal texture, which will be our black arrow. And then our pressed button, which will be this arrow over here with the gray. We will save this by doing control shift S. Then we'll create a new folder and we will call it dialogue. And then we will save this as dialogue handler. We will also want to go down to our dialog folder and right click and then add new folder and we will add our dialogs. This is where we will hold our resources. And now we will add two resources. One will be conversation. And the other one will be called dialogue. So from here, what we'll want to do is click here and create new GD script. Then we will save this script as conversation. And then we will also go over to our dialogue, create a new uh, script, and then we will save this as dialogue script. Then we will save that under our conversation file, we will want to go over there and then we will do extends resource and then we'll do export variable dialogue semicolon array. Be sure to in instantiate this and then equals to uh, two brackets. Make sure they're not curly, otherwise it will not work. Then we will go over to our dialogue script. We will also do extends resource and then we will do export variable speaker string semicolon string is equal to string and then export variable speak oh sentence semicolon string is equal to quotations then we will save this so what we'll want to do is create our first dialog. So we will press control D out of here. Control D once you've clicked on this, and then we will just type opening, but you can rename it to whatever you'd like. Drag it into our dialogs folder, and then we will create, uh, we'll go into our array and click up on the size with this arrow. Then what we'll want to do is uh, click on these pencils and then create object and then drag our dialogue TRES file. Make sure that you go down and make it unique. Otherwise, it will use the same resource and it will change constantly. So for this one, we can just do Cypher as our character and say, hello, I am Cypher. And this can be you saying, I am player. And we can save that. We will use this for later. 
So what we'll want to do is create a script for our dialogue handler. And then we will want to remove all this. Export variable convo, which is shortened for conversation. Resource semicolon resource is equal to null. And then we'll create onready variable speaker is equal to speaker. And we will just do the same for our dialogue rich label text. Next, we'll want to go down and create a dialogue number. Semicolon integer is equal to zero. Var index integer is equal to zero. We'll create a first function, update dialogue. Speaker.text is equal to conversation.dialogue. Index, not dialogue number, dot speaker. Be sure to capitalize. Dialogue dot text is equal to conversation dot dialogue index dot sentence. Dialogue number equals length of conversation dot dialogue, which is our array. Then we'll call it change dialogue as our next function. So func change dialogue is going to be speaker.text is equal to conversation.dialogue index.speaker. And for dialogue here, then we'll do sentence. Next, we will connect a signal from our resume button under pressed, and we will type the following. If index is less than a dialogue number, minus one, index plus equals one, then we'll call our change dialogue function. But if index plus one, is equals equals to dialogue number, then we will yield to our resume button and then we will call in our pressed function, which is exactly this. And then we will do self dot visible is equal to false. Before we move on, be sure this is always toggled as invisible. Otherwise, this will not work and you will get uh, the dialog prompted on your screen. Next, what we'll want to do is create a static body. And then we'll create a collision shape. And then a sprite 3D. This will be our character. So we can go under art and we can just drag and drop our NPC right here. We will also create a box. And this box will be where our player detects an NPC to talk to. And then what we'll want to do is go on top to the very parent, go to groups under node, and then create dialogue as our group. We can change this to dialogue trigger and then save this as dialogue trigger. And then we'll go to the script. Click the script button and then click, click create. And then we'll remove all this and then do export variable dialogue resource resource semicolon resource is equal to null on ready variable player is equal to get parent dot get node player i'm doing this that way i don't have to instantiate inside of a world scene but rather i can just grab globally 
function ready player.connect dialog interacted self show dialog then we'll create that function show dialog dialog handler which we should actually go under project project settings go under auto, auto load then click on this folder and then we'll go to dialog we'll go to dialog handler then add close and then control s now we have dialog handler dot convo or conversation is equal to dialog res or resource dialog handler dot update dialog which is our function dialog handler dot visible is equal to true and then we need to change our player script and what we'll want to put in first is signal dialog interacted oh we will also want to add var can interact bool is equal to false then under our movement function we'll do if input dot is action pressed interact which we will now go to project settings input map and add in our interact button in this case it will be e control s then we will set if can interact is equal to true then emit signal dialog interacted now we'll want to actually go to our player scene and create a new uh, area 2d or area then add a collision shape we can just make this a square for now make it just big enough so it's above our collision shape control s and then we'll call this our interact box and then under node we'll go to signals and then we'll press body entered and then body exited so if our player has entered a body that has the group dialogue then we will allow for interaction otherwise it will be false for our exited function now go to your world scene And under our grid map, we'll want to instantiate our NP oh, our dialogue trigger. So now under our dialogue trigger, you'll want to go under inspector and then drag our opening or your dialogue TRES. Make sure that it has all the dialogues inside and save. Now for the explanation part. We are first going to have a dialogue array inside of a resource. This way we can have multiples of the resource and we can just drag and drop inside of uh, export variables. And then what the reasoning behind an array is you can go under an array and you can select an infinite amount of sizes for different amounts of arrays, so long as you make them unique. And now for our dialogue, uh, this script takes, well, pretty, it's pretty obvious, but it takes our speaker, which is a string, and then our sense, which is also a string. But the neat thing is, it is inside of each 
partition of the dialog array. Now for the dialog handler, what it does is takes an export variable called conversation and you can just drag the resource into it so long as it is a conversation resource and you can do uh, different indexes of the dialog and you can press the button in order to uh, continuously increase the index and change the index of which you're looking at the dialog. So for example on update dialog we have the speaker.text is equal to conversation.dialog so our resource, our dialog resource and then we're having our index which is done manually by our player by pressing the button and then we have the speaker variable which is a string and it is being set equal to the text of a rich uh, label text here. So if I pull up the dialog handler, it is changing the text of this node here. Same for the dialog. And what change dialog does is it changes both the speaker, the speaker name and also the text of the sentence. And it updates every time a button is pressed, and which is why I don't run it when uh, the last button is needed to be pressed. Otherwise, it will give you an error saying you cannot go over the index amount. As for the dialog trigger, what we're doing is grabbing uh, a custom resource, for example, our opening resource, which has custom dialogs inside of it, setting it to null first, but you can drag and drop inside of a scene. And with this, we are getting the parent, which is if we were to run the game, we would have a root node. And we're getting this function to get to the top. And then from there, we're trying to find the node player, which it will search down from here. Then, what we're doing on our ready function is connecting the dialog interacted, which is in the player script, to ourself. And then we're showing the dialog, which is our node right here, or our function. And then we are getting our dialog handler, which is our autoload dot conversation or uh, our resource is equal to the resource that we have just updated up here. Then we're calling to update the dialog in order to make sure that the dialog is different. And then we're having it invisible or its visibility to true. And finally, in our player script, we have signal dialog interacted. You can also do multiple different signals, but we just only needed one. Then we're setting our bool by typing bool after our semicolon. And then the reasoning behind uh, making sure that we can interact is once a body is entered inside of an area 2D, it only renders uh, the capability to press a button if uh, in that one frame. Otherwise, it will not work which is why we set this bool. So if we're inside, the bool is on and means that we can interact. Otherwise, if we are outside the body, then we can no longer interact and it is normal. So now if we load it in, we can press start, click on a save, and I'm already close to our NPC and we can just talk. And there you go. That is all for today. Video on converting this entire project to Good 04. Then be sure to leave a comment or vote on the poll that I'm going to post in a little bit. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. I hope it was useful. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and a comment and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys all later.